Hey, good morning everyone. Kay here on my homestead in Tennessee. Well, something had to go. And I'm sure if you've been following me, you know I took on too much to try to do by myself. Something had to go and that was the tomato terraces. I didn't plan it. I hoped, I kept hoping that I could get back up here and rescue it, but it just didn't happen. So let's talk about it. So when I first came here, this was one of the first things to get developed. And because I'm on a hill and everything slopes down and the previous owners had some raised beds already started up here on the top, I thought, well, let me just build my garden down because that's the direction. You always want to look, where does the sun go? Where's your sun? I talked about this in extensively in my tiny little California garden. You always want to say, where is the sun? Figure that out, not only in the summer, but in the winter. And this was a big issue for my California garden and a big issue here. This is my best sun. So I said, all right, build the garden down from the raised beds and go that way and follow the sun during the day. Say hi. BJ says hi. Can you say hi? Wave. Hi. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. So I started no-till gardening in my little California garden. And one of my videos about the first time I got wood chips delivered, well, they were just literally across the street taking down a tree that had just fallen. And I said, can I have a half a load? And that was my first experience getting wood chips. I'll put the link right up there and one of my most popular videos. So it's in my head the very first thing I did when I came here literally in January of the I'd only been here a month and I listed myself on chip drop because I was determined to do no-till gardening here. And these terraces were developed with that in mind. Now Last year, I hired a strong young man, Jack, a uh, wonderful young man, and, and he was so good to carry me load after load of wood chips in the gorilla cart from, from up there down to here. Fortunately, you carry an empty gorilla cart back up, but just managing, wrangling that down and driving it into the rows. Once again, I mean, I had done it the year before, covered the whole thing in cardboard, covered the whole thing with four inches of wood chips. And then you just drill down your holes where you want to plant. And then inside, because that's very clay soil, uh, I had topsoil delivered. The whole thing was built up into two terraces, okay? But this year, Randy used the auger and drilled me, I think there were 40 holes on each terrace. So I had planned to plant about 70 tomatoes and some basil and a couple of other things. And so what happened is that cardboard we laid down last year and covered literally with three inches of wood chips. And then the whole surrounding area was fabric, um, weed cloth. And the hairy crabgrass just goes through that like a needle. I mean, like a needle, and it was just coming up all through it, all around. So, weeds, and I was really busy with the lower garden and the flower garden and everything else, and I just said something had to go. And I was just hoping before I got to August that I would get back to work on the terraces and get. I went, even went down two weeks ago and bought tomato cages thinking I could rescue, you know, 20 plants out of the 70 that were planted here. And no, they're, all of those rains we had just destroyed those tomatoes. And with all that rain and all those weeds coming up, you have all of the soil diseases splashing up on the bottom and it just goes right up the plant and takes over. You have to maintain tomatoes 
if you want good production. These are indeterminate tomatoes. And so they did not get the care they needed. They didn't get the maintenance. And like at some point in the last week, I just said, it's, they're not going to get rescued. Something has to go. I am not going to have the perfect garden all around that I wanted. And I had to just cut this loose. So yesterday, the weeds were literally knee high on both of these terraces. Three or four weeks ago, Randy was here and I said, the weeds were so bad up here and the tomatoes looked worse up here than they did down there. And the weeds were less down there. So he decided to till this. It's the first time it had been tilled since before it was first planted in 21. Well, that didn't go so well because what happened is it stirred up all those grass seeds and then it exploded and you couldn't even see the tomatoes for for the weeds right here and to a lesser extent down here but I just said save what you can and yesterday he weed whacked it you may have heard that I hurt my shoulder and so I was actually pulling weeds in the flower garden just yanking them out and I'm saying to myself okay wait until it's you water so that it's you can pull out weeds so much easier when the soil is wet than dry. And I said, no, no, let's just get it done. Let's get it done. So I'm doing this. And then later that night, I felt like, you know, it was hurt. So, so yesterday he was here and he weed whacked both terraces, this wonderful pepper plant, wonderful basil plant, two scrawny little tomatoes and the red Malabar spinach on the top terrace. That's it. So the question is what to do now? You know, we're going to have a heat wave for the next 10 days. It's no rain, 93 plus, could go up to 100. A lot of the weeds are going to die a lot. You know, the lawn's going to die. So I won't have to worry so much about weeds getting out of control in the next week or two. So I have to decide, do I cover this again? In order to get wood chips down to cover these terraces to start all over, I have to hire someone to help me. And finding someone just to do labor is not so easy. Um, because everybody's busy. Everybody that wants to work has a job and is busy. And I can't do it. So the question is, what happens to these terraces? You know, I worked so hard and I spent so much money developing them and doing the one string method, putting up all the T posts, you know, having help to do that. And so, do I just let it all go? What do you think? I'd love your feedback. What can I do with it now? I'd love to actually, if you know, in my wildest dreams, I would love to have a greenhouse sitting right there, but it's in my front yard. You have to consider it's your front yard. If you want to sell your property, are you going to have some hoop house in your front yard? No, it has to be something pretty. And that means well built, it needs to have uh, radiant heat, some kind of heat, and it has to have electricity and water. And all of those things cost money. And it needs a good foundation because this was just, I just brought in topsoil to dump on here to level this out because all we were going to be doing was walking on it. You know, it wasn't going to be a building sitting on it. So foundation has to be built and all of that. So we're talking about lots of money. So, but this is where the sun is. So um, let me give you a, a look at the, that was not a gunshot. That was something like a walnut hitting my, the metal roof on my shop, <laughs> which sounds like a gunshot. Hang on. Now I had every weed out of this blueberry patch and this was also covered in cardboard and then four inches at least maybe six inches of cedar wood chips and he did that last year as well and you see how this nut grass and the crab grass everything comes up through it so it, the weeds are tenacious and I don't know if, if weed cloth doesn't do it and card layers of cardboard doesn't do it then then what do you do you know 
So here's Terrace 1. We'll walk in here. And this is what happens to weed cloth. Is this was all, the outside was all a whole band of it around. And it just gets chopped up in the weed whacker. This is one pepper. And I don't know if there's a tag buried down there, but look at the size of these leaves. I've never seen pepper leaves that big. So I would love to know what this variety is, but maybe we'll find out at some point. So there's two actually. Oh wow. So there's two peppers and we have peppers to harvest here. This looks like another sweet chocolate. And this looks like a clump of weeds, but maybe he thought there was something growing in there. Oh yeah, there was a pepper in there. Look at that. So I have to clean all that up. I'm telling you, this was knee high. Well, it was more than knee high because look, this is one weed. This is the seeds of the hairy crabgrass. It comes up to your chest. This is a basil, obviously. All this is gone. Okay, so he kept this one tomato here. And then all of this red Malabar spinach. And it's all, of course, covered in weeds. And I wanted to, I want to do a video on, this is Oriental Lady's Thumb. And I just learned, thanks to one of my viewers, subscribers, that it is edible and medicinal. And all parts of this plant are edible. So I want to be doing a video on that very soon. Now the red Malabar spinach is blooming. The intention for it, this was a volunteer, and the intention for it was to transplant it to, to be back here and to grow up the outside because I was going to have just tomatoes in there. Since that didn't happen, yesterday Randy said if we move it at this point it'll probably kill it. And it dies back in the winter anyway, so I'm just going to leave it, collect some seeds, and I'm going to keep using the leaves for veggie scrambles. And he left this one, and that's it. So let's go down to the, the next terrace and see what was saved. What is this? This just looks like... Um, oh, this is wild lettuce! <laughs> this is wild lettuce, but it's gone to flower and it's almost to seed, so I don't know if we can still use the plant for tincture. It's a little bit of a tomato here. <sighs> Pretty bad shape. I had put this in earlier, and if I had done that all over, we'd be in good shape. The basil plants look fantastic. I have so much basil this year, I wish I could sell it. He probably thought that was, that's a weed. So, and this is the Johnson grass that all of this needs to come out, but I see it grew up around an orange hat tomato. And so he obviously didn't cut that with the, with the weed whacker and there's a bunch of cherry tomatoes down here. This is a canna that was a volunteer and it actually did better than the rest of my cannas. It didn't get e eaten as badly. And I wanted to show you that there's no sign yet of anything coming up in my no-till Ruth Stout potato bed. Now maybe I put too much hay down. I put a lot of hay down. And so I have no idea if anything's happening under there. It could have just completely suppressed it. You know, maybe I'll get potatoes in the spring. I don't know. Uh, so that's that. And then as for the vineyard, everything's harvested. The juice is in the refrigerator and I want to make some grape jelly. And the flower garden, I managed to get all of that ground cherry out of there. Uh, some things say it's toxic, some 
don't so I'm not exactly sure all I know is they get huge once they set their seeds it's a problem they crowd out other things most importantly I've tasted the ground cherry and it doesn't taste good so if it doesn't taste good and it crowds out other stuff whether it's toxic or not I want it out so you see I cleaned up all these edges all of this was just full of these the Johnson grass the crabgrass and the ground cherry and I made a little path through there it needs a lot more work but the fantastic discovery I made which I couldn't even see until I got in here was look at my roselle look look so I hope that's a little bit of an update about what's going on in the lower garden. I still have some things coming on, which is the flower corn, that late flower corn I planted. The sunflowers are winding down, the tomatoes are winding down, the cucumbers definitely, they're devastated. But I've got these winter squash coming on over here. I've got to harvest sunflower seeds, but you know that the sunflowers have been utilized by all of the finches. Yesterday there were at least a dozen golden finches on the sunflowers down there uh, while we were down there harvesting and you know they're dropping seeds so that's going to be a an area of the lower garden that's going to come back year after year and what a blessing it is to have volunteers, especially volunteers that you want in your garden like sunflowers because everyone loves sunflowers. They cheer you up I hope this is helpful. I would love your thoughts on what to do here. All the no-till people that uh, love no-till and think that's the way to go. How do you keep the weeds from coming right through the wood chips? I haven't found a way. I would love to develop a flower, gar flower and herb garden up by the house, up near the shop, if I could find a way to suppress the weeds. But I need help, so. All your suggestions are welcome. Thank you so much for following this channel. I hope this is educational, informational, and entertaining. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, scroll down and click all, so you won't miss anything right here on the homestead. I'm Kay, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. And here's the peanut gallery. I used to worry that they would all run away with all these woods around, but they like hanging with me. And they pretty much stay near the house if I'm inside. <laughs>